lights blazed in Victoria. The capital of Hong Kong was even gayer than usual, stimulated by a royal visit already at this early stage, successful far beyond expectations. Undoubtedly, the vivacious personality of Princess Alexandra has evoked lively response everywhere she's appeared. Escorted by Sir Michael Turner and Sir Siknin Chow, she now walked towards the sandpan on the way to the Sea Palace restaurant. There, Her Royal Highness was to be the guest of past and present unofficial members of the Executive and Legislative Councils. The evening engagement was an example of gracious living in Hong Kong. And graceful girls paddled the sampan across the water. How much pleasanter to go dining out this way than battling through motor traffic. The elite of the colony, British and Chinese, awaited the princess in the restaurant. Diners at the Sea Palace don't depend on a printed menu. They see the fish still alive and choose anything they fancy. For Princess Alexandra, it was a novel experience. One which she evidently enjoyed, though there was so much to select from, it must have been difficult to make a choice. If the customer doesn't like the look of it at closer quarters, something else can be fished out. It can be a splashy operation. Perhaps that's all part of the fun. The final choice was a crawfish and a fine specimen too. Sir Sik Nin Chow is one of the colony's foremost industrialists. Sir Michael Turner, before his recent retirement, was chairman of the Hong Kong and Shanghai Bank. Both are members of the Legislative Council. By this time, the princess was no stranger to chopsticks. There was a marked Chinese flavor in an engagement of another kind when Her Royal Highness went to see part of a Cantonese opera at the Lee Theatre. The proceeds of the performance were devoted to hospitals. The royal presence ensured a full house. In the princess's honor, the operatic troupe put on a special dance. 